Hi, you're listening to Phil DeBella, and this is Flashcast by PDB. Today, I want to cover off 20 great human values. I recently was fortunate enough to do a workshop out of the Young President's organization, where a Swami from India came to present, talked about many things. Um, The basis was around mindset and choosing attitude and being the best version of yourself. Um, A lot of the self-work that uh, I love doing and uh, share with people on the Flashcast And today what I want to share is 20 great human values in my own words that uh, I got from that workshop. And I try to put it in English as possible. um, And I suggest uh, that uh, maybe make a note of those that uh, really resonate with you. So uh, 20 uh, great human values uh, that came out of that workshop, um, which says a lot about people. Uh, But I suggest pen and paper uh, and write down the ones that resonate with you. Maybe make a list of all 20 and then, you know, tick the ones that uh, the top five that mean something to you because everybody is different. The beauty of us as humans is that we are all individuals and it's about us. We are who we are. We are and become who we want to become. uh, And we have to do the work. And as I keep saying, like, Dr. Joe Dispenza says, jump in the river. If you want to achieve, you want to get somewhere, you want to achieve to that destination, you need to get in the river because it won't happen, nothing happens unless you take action. So 20 great human values uh, in no particular order, uh, just the order that I happen to write them down in and and make some notes on and I'd like to share with uh, the listeners. Uh, The first one is humility. Um, So the value of humility, which is simple, don't feel superior to others. Uh, making sure that we um, value um, ourselves and value others where we don't feel superior to others. So firstly, humility. Number two is unpretentiousness. So being unpretentious. In other words, be yourself. Keep it real. Three, harmlessness. So you have no intent to harm uh, in terms of how your actions or your talking. Uh, and now that doesn't mean that you might not say things that are going to harm people. Let's get it right. It's that your intention is not to harm. Um, I often say things to some people um, where my intention is to be positive, to help them grow, but it could be taken uh, the wrong way. So it's not how they receive it. It's actually what my intention was. And uh, so number three is harmlessness. Four is forgiveness. You know, um, to be able to accept one's weakness or faults, um, we all have them. I have weaknesses, I have many, I have faults, I have many, as do others. Uh, so the value of forgiveness, number four, to be able to accept one's weakness or faults. Five is uprightness. So uprightness, uh, how I interpret it, was true to your consciousness. So making sure that you're staying true to your consciousness, staying true to what you believe in uh, and not being swayed and deterred if you truly believe in something. Six Service of the perceptor, and that means don't forget your teachers. So it's a form of gratitude. Service of the perceptor, um, and and that I interpreted uh, what to be don't forget your teachers. You know, along the journey, uh, we have many people that teach us things, and uh, they don't have to be classified a teacher to be teaching us anything. And it's not always positive. Some of my best lessons have been learned from people that have. Done, done the wrong thing, um, that have done the wrong thing to others, to be able to sit back and reflect, um, you know, they become your teacher as well. So um, let's not be naive to it. Let's be in service of the perceptor, being able to watch and not forget where we've learnt and who's taught us lessons, both good and bad. Seven is purity. Um, and purity is about conscious of imperfection, um, being in the mode of bettering yourself always, that you, um, you know, the purity of the consciousness of imperfection, that we are imperfect, and that is actually quite a pure thing, um, being conscious that we are imperfect, but we're always on a journey to better ourselves. Eight, steadfastness. Uh, and steadfastness, my interpretation, was all about consistency of purpose. So how focused and determined are you? To, um, to a cause. So, you know, steadfastness is all about how focused and determined are you um, to a cause. Nine, self-control. So in here, we talk about refraining from action that impedes progress. Uh, so making sure that you display self-control, refraining from actions that stop you from actually moving forward and being better today than yesterday. Ten, dispassion in objects. And this is a big one. And this is all about not getting too attached to objects, you know, not valuing possessions. Uh, I'm a big one on this. I I love driving cars. I often have uh, new cars. And uh, people always say, oh, did you take photos of your last one? Uh, uh, Do you miss it? The answer is no, because I don't get emotionally attached. doesn't mean I don't appreciate it. doesn't mean that I'm not grateful. 
but I don't get emotionally attached to objects. Um, it, it, to me, that's not where my passion lies. I get emotionally engaged with people, with moments, living life in moments, not with objects. Number 11 is absence of ego. Um, that life isn't all about us. And if you think about it, even at times when we think we're not displaying ego, we are. We're making decisions based about how we feel, how it makes us feel, um, rather than being in service to somebody else. So life isn't all about you. You know, have that value of, of getting rid of the ego. Life isn't always about you. Twelve, perception of pain and evil of birth. Um, you know, and this was, was a strange one for me um, when the Swami was talking about it. And the notes I made here was that eliminate desires to be content, um, you know, that around things. You know, it, it's all about having the right perception, um, that your perception is of, of goodwill um, is how I interpreted it. Um, this one, but um, when Swami talked about perception of pain and evil, evil of birth, I thought, well, what does this actually mean to me? How do I reword this um, to me? And it, and it more or less was eliminate desires so that you are content. Um, you know, really, it's, it comes back to values. Number thirteen, non-attachment. Um, to understand that everything is temporary. Um, it's not morbid. We, we are here temporarily. We're born on a certain day. We pass away on a certain date, some earlier than others. Understand that everything is temporary, whether it's a possession, whether it's a moment in time, everything is temporary. 14 is non-infatuation. So we see people get infatuated with things, whether it's our children, with the possession, let it be. There's got to be a certain amount of flow. And, um, you know, again, a, a hard one um, at first for me to understand when the Swami was talking about it. But when he broke it down and he and he talked about children and uh, talked about the, from a from a perspective of people get too infatuated with their children. They think they own their children. You've got to let your children be. You're simply the caretakers of the child of your children. Yes, you made them. You brought them into the world. You want the best for them. But if you are completely infatuated with something, and in this case your children, then you're not going to get the best out of them or you're not setting them up for success. You've got to let them be. Fifteen, a constant balance of mind. Uh, and this was important to me, which is all about positive state of mind, um, understanding that even this shall pass. It's something we talk about in our family, that you're going to have ups, you're going to have downs. This is the journey of life. Um, when you know your purpose, the how and the journey is never too difficult. Um that understand that difficult moments shall pass. So have a constant balance of mind. This is what stand out for me, is that you want to keep a positive state of mind always. 16, unanswering desire to enlightenment. Um, you know, and this is all about being comfortable in your own skin, where a lot of people are not. So unanswering desire to enlightenment, um, getting comfortable in your own skin, understanding a higher authority. 17 is resort to solitary place. Um, and that is being a pillar of your own strength, being able to be comfortable in your own space, taking time out to reflect, to be grateful, to plan, but um, being comfortable in your own space. 18, a distaste for crowd of people. And this is all about not depending on company to satisfy your needs. Some people always need to be around people to satisfy their own needs or to hide from something. This is all about being comfortable with the people around you. 19, consistency in self-knowledge. And that means about operating, in my words, better tomorrow than today, that you're always on this journey of betterment, that you're on a journey of learning more and more every day, learning from the good, learning from the bad. But it's having that value of self-knowledge and being consistent in learning every day. And 20, finally, is perception of end of true knowledge. And that is, to me, I'd interpret all about the truth, keeping things authentic, keeping things real, identifying what the purpose of life is and keeping it real, building your plans, mapping it out. Now, some 20, 20 values coming from a Swami um, out of a workshop I wanted to share. Some of them uh, are going to mean more to others than other people. I've got my five that I've made a list of and rated. Some of them I still don't really understand out of the other 15. But hey, it's taking out what works for you, understanding your purpose, your higher authority, and then for the journey is always worth it. Until next time, you've been listening to Phil DeBella, and this is Flashcast by PDB. Go and be the best you can be. Mm -hmm.